on the, uh, the, the degree thing, I mean, it's, I find it quite interesting because I've got a degree in the field that I work in and it was still fucking pointless. <laughs> <laughs> I see, uh, see a few familiar faces and stuff. Those chairs come to all the gigs I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, if you, if you, so a few people have seen me before. Uh, if you haven't seen me before, it might be fun. You might enjoy the stuff I've got to, to say. If you have seen me before, same old shit. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I'll start by, I like to address like, my race situation when I start a gig. Because this is really interesting to me, right? Because I, I, like, I, I was really excited to do this gig. Because it's, it's nice to, go, to be somewhere with, like very leftist gig, uh, you don't get to go to many of those, and I find it very interesting, because I'm in a room where there's more non-binary people than there is people of colour. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, sure, I still don't know where my dad is. Yes, I'm a mixed race, um, and uh, yeah, I like, I like to sort of talk about it at the top of my set. I'm, 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 I'm half English and half Somali. Right? That's quite a surprise for people. People don't suspect that at all. It's quite like a, a lot of variation, but I'm um, half English, half Somali. What that means is, half English, half Somali, is I'll steal your boat, but I'll apologise for doing so. <laughs> look at look at me. I'm the captain now. Maybe is that okay? Um, <laughs> joke like all the shows they do right and honest to god i was in leicester and i was approached by a woman after i'd been on stage and she uh, she was like sorry 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 i just want to ask you a question quickly uh, are you actually half somali i said like yeah i am why would i lie and she goes oh just because you know like you really don't look it and i was like i know the hair the skin complexion that sort of thing she goes no your eyes are too far apart what <laughs> Like you, you as an actor, someone who I feel is very instantly engaging. Like it doesn't, you, you, you walk on stage and then you've immediately got everyone's attention, and I, I think that's an incredible yeah, right. little thing. Because I, I, that's, I think, I mean, I, I kind of have a similar thing, but I get everyone's attention because I, I don't let people not pay attention to me. I'm very loud and aggressive with it, whereas yeah. you're a lot more relaxed and just sort of, you've got, you've got that. Um, I think you, 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 you've got that ability to, to, to just get everyone's attention on you without, without, need to, well, without seeming like you need to fight for it. I, is that something that you feel like you've always been able to do, or do you completely disagree with that statement, or do, was there a point where you got to that level of comfort? Yeah, I've, well, do you know what it is? I am a big pro wrestling fan, and watching people make an entrance, and they look so composed, with, right before they're about to be thrown about for 30 minutes, like literally, they're about to get battered, but yet that sort of one minute when they walk down the ramp, they just look so like composed, and it all all eyes on on them, and uh, it's like there's just something really kind of commanding about that. There's just sort of I, I really admire that kind of unwritten, uh, unspoken confidence. Um, so I just I've just I just try to replicate that really. I just, <laughs> I that, that's an incredible like, analogy. Yes. That's really good. I've never thought of it like that before, but yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very good analogy. I mean, it all goes to shit when I open my mouth, but... Um, <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> Not even slightly. Oh, well, you ask me what it's like going, uh, going to, into stand-up comedy coming from a Jehovah's Witness background, and to be honest, it's not that different. You know, as a stand-up comedian, it's quite the same. You know, you travel around different areas talking to strangers about your beliefs and they laugh in your face. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, uh, the, you think, you think that the toughest thing about growing up Jehovah's Witness would be having to go without normal things that most people are allowed to have, you know, like Christmas, birthdays, a mind of your own. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween as well. Um, they don't celebrate Halloween either because they don't like it when random people come up to their doors. <laughs> <laughs> I would have thought that would be the one time that they would go around knocking since everyone's expecting it and if they get rejected they leave with a bit of Haribo. <laughs> I'm disabled by the way. Uh, I mentioned that because, well, I kind of have to really. Much the same way if I came on with a gun you'd all be going, what the fucking hell's he doing with that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just try and get it out of the way early. Um, I, I don't know why I mentioned guns at the minute because obviously there's a big controversy going on about uh, potentially video games making you violent. Um, now my childhood was nothing to write home about, which is probably good because I was at home most of the time anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, 
But, um, but to be honest, I played a lot of video games and I, I don't think I've ever turned violent. Admittedly, it would require an energy that I probably don't possess, but even, <laughs> even still, I, I can't really see the link between, between video games and violence. I mean, I played Pac-Man a lot when I was growing up and while I've chewed a lot of pills and listened to some repetitive music, I've never shot anybody. <laughs> I've uh, played Sonic a lot, I've never been known to chase rings, although I believe some people do, but that's fair enough. <laughs> I'll be honest, I wasn't too sure about using that one today. <laughs> it, uh, it went alright, didn't it? It went alright. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> well, with one person, but... Yeah. <laughs> Percentage-wise, I'll take that, you know. <laughs> Unless it's going to happen to me, you're going to start throwing things at me and it'll be the world's saddest game of Space Invaders because I'll just be moving side to side. But, you know, I'll, I'll live, it's fine. I'll, uh, yeah, so I said I mentioned I'm disabled, I do that for a reason, it's to get it out of the way. And to be honest, it's my thing. Without it, I'd just be another straight white male talking about being single. So, you know. I need a hook. I mean, not literally, my, my arms are fine. <laughs> Fucking right, <laughs> I think, and I said this to somebody uh, who was like, um, who was going to ask you for a spot. I said the same thing to them. I said, in a way, they're not what you expect, in in a good way, because like, obviously, the gig's sold on the idea of like, you know, you do all the content warnings and stuff, yeah, which yeah. is great. And I think in the back of some people's minds, they sometimes get a feeling of, oh, this might be difficult. Like, I don't know where the line is. But when you're actually there, you realise that. The line is just be funny, and that's pretty much the end of it. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not, as long as you're not outwardly offensive and you don't, and let's be honest, probably like 90% of comedians aren't like that. No, it's no, not, They're not going to come out and start yelling blue murder. And, <laughs> no. and I, I, found the, I found the audience at Blizzard really, really nice. I think they will go, I, the thing I did like, and I, I did bits of material with you guys that I haven't done anywhere else, because <laughs> you don't, some of the stuff I did, like the, the you know, like the the D and D type stuff, you couldn't do that in front of a standard <laughs> audience. No. But the Blizzard audience will go with you on something, providing you're capable of doing it competently and you can make it funny. I think that's the best thing about them. They're quite receptive to any style of comedy, really. Thinking about who was on on the night, there was a number of different, you know, different styles. I think, I think actually of the of the lineup, I might have been the only person who was doing like pretty bog standard stand up really when I think about it. One of the first times I ever did material about my disability, I have cerebral palsy. Um, it's not like I've Alex Anonymous thing, I just thought I'd let you know. <laughs> and um, I said, um, I, I did a bit of material about it and he said, uh, oh yeah that was it, I know, I'm sorry, I never used to do, I never used to tell people what it was, so like, telling you is kind of just my way of getting it out there. I never used to say, I just used to point out the obvious that I had a disability. When you need a Sherpa to get on stage, you know, it's, it's worth pointing it out. <laughs> But I never used to say what it was, and then shortly after that, a guy came up to me and he said, uh, do you mind if I ask you what your disability is? And I said, no, it's cerebral palsy. And his response was, oh, that's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and cheers for that, Dr. Shipman. Yeah, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Didn't know whether that should have been in a content warning, but I figured the gig's not in Hyde, so I should be all right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, uh, like, yeah it's, wor it's worked with me and against me, and it's all right. I mean... It makes me quite, I think it's made me funnier in a way because I've developed the ability to respond sarcastically to people that say stupid things to me. It did kind of cost me my benefits though when I went to an ATOS assessment and after 20 minutes of being questioned about my disability, I said, look mate, I can prove my disability in two easy steps. But... <laughs> I always see that joke as an audience intelligence test. And I'll be honest, there was about two seconds there where I thought, shit, no. <laughs> It's not worked, it? So, uh, I just got back from spending time with my family in Newcastle. Uh, my, I'm a Geordie, you might not be able to hear it, uh, but I am a Geordie. Uh, my family are all liberal Geordies, uh, which means that they did not care when I came out as pansexual. They did not care when I came out as non-binary, but they were genuinely <laughs> devastated when I told them I was teetotal. <laughs> The whole family, the whole extended family, is, is very liberal, very accepting, very left-leaning. Uh, my grandma included, a few days before her birthday, my cousin came up to my grandma as a lesbian. My grandma's immediate reaction was, oh, I've just bought you a handbag. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the link is there. I don't know what the link is there between lesbians and not liking handbags. I think lesbians would like handbags, you know? I mean, you, you unzip them, you open them up, you turn them sideways, it's basically a vagina. <laughs> 
two. Uh, never been in one. Uh, <laughs> technically untrue, been in one. Uh, <laughs> don't remember much of it. All right, then. Um, <laughs> uh, I should go back to drinking. <laughs> it's just tonic water, it's shit. I'm in a gift shop at the moment because my career is booming. <laughs> It's just ludicrous. This one fellow was like, uh, excuse me, mate, how much for this tile? I said, I don't know, a quid? He says, oh, says 50p over there. Why ask that? <laughs> <laughs> I did that too hard. <laughs> and then this other person was like, uh, I saw that like, last week, you had these like pink and purple butterflies over the back, they're really quite nice, you know. Uh, but you haven't got any more, what's happened there? I said, oh, sorry, sold the last one, I'd love to help you, but I can't at the moment. She goes, oh, you know, that's a shame, because, you know, my nan really likes butterflies. Oh, why didn't you say that? <laughs> yeah, I'll well, get the secret stash out, shall I? <laughs> box at the back for the people who can't process basic information, just for you. <laughs> Tell you about that. I, I'll take the blame on this one. Uh, this is my my, my bad. Um, so basically, where I sit at work, there's these plaques on the wall that say stuff like "Live, Laugh, Love on them." You know that kind of thing. And I'm just <laughs> so I, there's like those stuff. And a little old lady came up to the store. She saw one she liked. It said, "Home is where the dog hair sticks to everything but the dog." Oh, yeah. You know, that was quite, quite cute, quite funny. And she was like, oh, you know, that's, that's very true, that, you know, because my daughter's got a dog and it's, you know, it's big and it's fluffy, you know, the fur gets everywhere, you know, it's all over your clothes, the carpet, the sofa, but it's such a lovely dog. I'd love to have a dog myself, you know, take it for walks, you know, I can show the grandkids and things like that, but I couldn't look after it, you know, it's just me in the bungalow, you've got the farmer and the owl, you know, all that sort of thing. I said, Mary, Mary, I couldn't give a fuck. <laughs> I couldn't give a shit. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm a bit gay. Shocking. I know. Look at me. Um, I'm, how gay am I? Um, when I meet someone socially who's like straight and cis, uh, my response is, that's fine. That's so fine. It, it, I, I actually went through a phase where I thought I was straight. Uh, so I, like my bro, do you know Jake? Jake? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, of course I don't think you'll know each other, I just thought you might have <laughs> <laughs> I'm an ally, like, my, my brother had a wedding and it was straight, and it was so cute, it's like they're really married. <laughs> oh dear, my brother fucking hates me doing this. <laughs> what are your favourite rooms to play, and your least favourite? Um... Am I going to sound like too much of a suck up if I say yours? <laughs> no, 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 this is this is the thing I get with a lot of spaces. A lot of space will be like over inclusive, by which you mean yeah. the organizer won't tell you to fuck off if you're non-binary and want to perform. Yeah, but like if you've not thought about accessibility, if you've not thought about yeah. Uh, how you're going to be received by the audience. If you've not thought about whether your ex can be fucking safe walking home after the gig, yes. then that means fucking nothing. Yeah. Um, so, like, Blizzard is, like, in terms of, like, a purely comedy crowd to perform to, um, that's probably my favourite room. In terms, I really love doing, like, mixed bill stuff as well. Uh, I'll be on with drag artists, poets, and well, there's so many fucking poets. <laughs> All of the queers like poetry. <laughs> the, the thing is, like, I, with these cabaret style things, I'll often approach them being like, I've got a lot of different skills. I can do comedy, I can do drag, I can do poetry. And we're already like, look, we've got 10 other people applying to do drag. We've got 50 fucking poets. <laughs> You're the only comedian. Just do comedy. Do <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, I'm pansexual and non-binary, so my relationship with gender is best described as... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it's 
spiritual thing. I don't have any personal experience to back that up, but some friends told me it was real. Um, <laughs> I like to use the terms uh, pansexual and bisexual interchangeably, because as a bisexual, I don't want to make a choice. <laughs> and as a pansexual, I want to feel special. Um, but as a comedian, uh, there's, there's one really annoying thing about being pansexual, and we all know what it is, is you always get the same fucking joke. It's always, does that mean you're attracted to pans? Anyone who laughs at that is homophobic. <laughs> um, and it's not, it's actually really offensive, but it's not that, it's not that at all, and it's like a big part of my identity. And being pansexual has got nothing to do with kitchenware, I just really like bread. <laughs> I have been doing that joke for six months now. It never normally gets more than 40% of the room. Multiple people have told me to cut it and I refuse to. <laughs> You'd think the toughest thing about growing up to her was witness was my, would be my sexuality, but if anything, it just made it 10 times easier for my dating life. My parents assuming that I'm straight by default. Um, for example, uh, when I was 17, my mum asked me if I had a boyfriend yet, whilst the girl that I fucked was sat right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Leanne, she was called. Or as mum and dad knew her as, my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was always allowed over for sleepovers. <laughs> <laughs> mum would be like, Kathy darling, will Leanne be coming tonight? And I'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> several times, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry straight men, I know you guys already have it really tough as it is. <laughs> I love this crowd, usually it's only the women that laugh at that joke, whilst the men are sort of sat around like, what, we do have it tough, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry straight men, some of the things that I do say in, particularly in the set that I did for you, some of the stuff that I say in it is, so to some people quite provocative like for example when i'm talking about you know how shit straight men are in bed yeah, that, that's one of my favorite um, bits i love that bit <laughs> if, if you were yeah it's like right you you're a woman you're a female stand-up comedian like yeah. that a lot of guys in the audience are going to be pissed off just at that <laughs> and, yeah you know so if you're about to go on stage and you're about to tell a bunch of straight men that they're shit you have <laughs> to be confident you're about to tell your oppressors that they're cunts you know like <laughs> Y you are. You, you have Is that to satisfying? Oh, very satisfying, <laughs> especially uh, especially when I sometimes, you know, the odd gig. That there was one gig I did where uh, I did all that spiel, and uh, and I heard a straight guy in the audience go, "Oh shit!" like that. <laughs> I was like, "Yes." Yeah, oh. <laughs> Shame you can't. Nailed the straight guy impression there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, so yeah, you have to if you're gonna do material about straight men being shit in bed or basically any type of material that you know might yeah. split a room, you have to yeah. do it confidently. You can't apologise because otherwise it just won't work. We haven't really been having a lot of sex recently though. Apparently it's lesbian bed death, that's why. Uh lesbian bed death is apparently a thing. Has anyone ever heard of lesbian bed death? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Apparently, it's the, it's the statistic that lesbian couples have sex the least amount, which it's not that we don't have as much sex as other types of couples, it's that we don't feel the need to have it as often, and that's because when we do have it, orgasms actually happen. <laughs> <laughs> and for anyone who's offended by that, just look at the stats, you know? Even the latest, <laughs> she's like, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, like, two, it's true, two out of three women don't always climax during sex. Do you know what else two out of three women are? Straight. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, I think another reason, though, why we don't have sex as often is because when we do have it, it does go on for quite a long time. You know, so it's not it's not uncommon for you know for you to be on your fifth orgasm and then suddenly the mail starts piling up. Yeah. So it's changing out the window. <laughs> You know, the cat's in the corner, because of course we've got a cat together, you're a lesbian. <laughs> the cat's in the corner, dead from dehydration. <laughs> the 
the sugar babes have got back together and rotated the line up three times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think another reason, though, why uh, why lesbian couples don't have sex as often is because when you tell a woman you're not really in the mood, you only really have to say it once. <laughs> no. um, it's true. That, uh, that offends some men, but it's fucking true. Like, I, personally, anyway, in my experience, I've never felt the need to fake a headache with a woman. She's never had to put up with me trying to get her in the mood by, I don't know, what would be the lesbian equivalent of trying to get a woman in, like going behind her while she's doing the dishes and poking her in the back of my fingers. <laughs> so I, know, I, I used to... I used to stand to pee. Um, and I tried... Does anyone here pee in the shower? Yes. Is anyone not admitting to peeing in the shower? <laughs> everyone, everyone, everyone... Okay, everyone close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. Everyone close your eyes. All right, everyone close your eyes. Johnny, and now, just, and now just raise your hand if you pee in the shower. Yeah, that, yeah, that's about what I thought, yeah. I can't. I've tried. I've, honest to God, tried back when I stood to piss. I tried. But it's really difficult because my brain just can't make the canal. If there's no urinal or toilet or your mum in front of me, <laughs> And the bladder just won't release, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You've been laughing at all the jokes all night, so hard, and you're probably such a cheery fella, really such a, and then I'm just like, ah, oh, piss on your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny liked that a bit too much. <laughs> but no, so I... So what I thought I'd do, because listen, pissing in the shower, it does, it is better for the environment. So I wanted to, you know, I wanted to get over this mental hurdle and learn how to do it. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I will start at the toilet and then I will get the flow going. <laughs> and then I will pinch off the flow and just sort of waddle over to the shower. was the plan. <laughs> Started off fine. <laughs> it's going great. <laughs> the dam's burst. It's all going great. I pinch off. I begin the waddle. And that's when I sneezed. <laughs> How do you explain that? We keep the hamster in the bathroom. I can explain to why that, why I was bringing the hamster out of the sink and why he smelled of piss. You are very in the room as well, which I assume comes from, well, uh, is related to your improv background. You're, you're always very present in a room. You're always sort of reacting off of stuff. You're, you're reacting off of stuff you've said that you seem like you didn't expect you to say. Um, yeah. Which now, that, <laughs> yeah. now that means... No. <laughs> that's just me. That's just yeah. me realizing my, my mouth running faster than my brain. <laughs> yeah, and, and 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 that and that, that that really works. It's one, that's one of my favorite parts about uh, about you as an actor. I, I I don't I genuinely don't know whether this is a thing that you do intentionally or whether it is just who you are. No, um, but yeah, it, it really I, works. You know, Brandon can confirm the number of times I'll just be talking to him or the dog or myself, and I'll just say some. Like there was a time when uh, I can't remember exactly what it was, but um, I was I was chatting to him and we were doing a bit. You know, we just chatting in voices and, and like you know how you do with, with partners you just sort of uh, chat shit to each other um i like i said something and then i said something like daft and that didn't make any sense and then i like stopped mid-sentence just went what like i was so disappointed in my brain <laughs> for saying something so stupid like i was actually angry at myself for being so stupid not because i'd said anything dumb just because what i'd said didn't make any sense like i was just like blah 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 blah, 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 blah nonsense what? Why would I say? Ah! Oh. And then, like, I'll just I react to myself in real time. I'm like, I'm watching myself uh, on a movie screen, just being like, this character doesn't make any sense, and he's and he's irrational, and and is too far too illogical <laughs> to exist in any real world. Uh, boo, boo! The the writers are shit. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 just towards your own brain. Yeah. Um, so like, my parents like try and be supportive. I've been out to them for a few years, um, but I don't really get it. So like. 
My mind's way of dealing with this is just to ask random questions at completely inappropriate times. Like, it was my dad's birthday. The whole family had, had gathered round for dinner. And my mum thought that was the ideal time to say, you know, I don't really get Grinder. <laughs> Is it like Tinder, but for gay people? <laughs> no, I'm no fucking coward. <laughs> so I explained to her, sort of. Tinder is where you go to meet someone in a bar and get to know them, maybe start dating. Grinder is where you go to meet someone in a bar and have sex with them in the toilets. <laughs> Except at the Edinburgh Fringe, where it's also a place to fly at people. <laughs> and generally, I went to the Edinburgh Fringe, went on Grinder because self-respect, fuck that. <laughs> and. Uh, there were people advertising shows. They were like, call me old, call me old fashioned. I do not want to get fired while sucking a dick. The response to, oh, I'm gonna come, should not be, oh, that's great. Could you come on Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> right, this is the important one. Because um, I go off to the toilet to like freshen up, sort myself out, you know, as you do. And at that moment, the door flies open and this lad bowls in, looking like what I could only describe as an emoji with a short back and sides. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he just came up to me and was like, mate, you're doing it all wrong, you're doing it all wrong, but don't worry, I'm going to sort you out for you. And he just started like fiddling with my hair and shirt and stuff, really weird. And at the end of that, he extends his hand and says, I'm Jay, what's your name? I said, Tony, nice to meet you. He said, oh, good one. Seriously, what is it? Mm. I said, I'm not lying to you. That is my name. I said, I don't believe you. I said, well, why don't you believe me? He said, you don't look like a Tony. I said, what do I look like then? He said, I don't know, Raj? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got a point, but I wasn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was fuming, right? I was fuming. Do you know when you're on the train, you go the whole journey, and no one checks your ticket? That's how I know. <laughs> So he argued for a few minutes, right? And at the end of the argument, he just said, well, Sanjay, or whatever your name is, see you later. He disappeared into the night, never saw him again. And there's two things from the whole altercation that really bugged me about it, right? The first one is, how do you walk into a public toilet, approach a stranger, start molesting their torso, and then be the one to say, there's something not right about you? <laughs> The second one was, it didn't even have a piss. I mean, that's weird, isn't it? That is... <laughs> one of the things I've never done, uh, and one of the things I can't talk about, and to be honest, I wouldn't anyway, because it's shit-ass boring, is, uh, is taking drugs. Uh, a lot of comedians do. Um, some of them should take more and go away. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> is that on film? Can I keep that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, like, some, some do, some don't. I don't really have a strong opinion on it. I've just never really wanted to do it myself. I'm obviously in a lot of pain sometimes with uh, cerebral palsy, so it was suggested to me that I might uh, that I might do cannabis, you know, help me with the pain. But uh, I think that would just make me paranoid and make me think the entire room was staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last thing I'd want to do is lean on some harder like cocaine, because if I did that, I'd find myself jabbering on endlessly to a room full of people. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck what I'm saying. Well, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was the victim of a hate crime. <laughs> this story does get funny. Um, <laughs> no, so uh, you're all like a kind of a nice left-leaning liberal crowd. I assume most, if not all, of you know the trans. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a distraction. It's just a problem. It's a defense mechanism, as is all of this. <laughs> I assume most of you know what the trans flag looks like. Yeah, well, just in case anyone doesn't, I do have a visual aid right here. This is the transgender flag. Now, we are very proud in our house. I'm on binary, my partner's trans, so we have this hanging from our first floor bedroom window. Now, I come home from a gig a couple weeks ago to see that the window has been smashed in. Someone has thrown a rock through our first floor bedroom window. We live in Salford, it's to be expected. But um, I go up to the bedroom, and here is the flag lying amongst shattered glass in our carpet. And there is the offending rock, but around the rock is a bit of paper, and on the bit of paper is a note. And I go over to the flag, to the rock, pick up the note and read it. And on that piece of paper is written two words, 
and I will never forget those two words until the day that I die. Fuck Argentina. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching Blizzard Comedy Lockdown Special. Um, obviously, we are very gutted that we aren't able to do our live shows for the foreseeable future, so it means a lot to us that you are continuing to support us in, in uh, whatever format we, we, we carry on in. Um, a special thank you to all of our patrons who are continuing to financially support us during this time. Uh, without you, we literally couldn't function, so thank you so much for that. Um, if you would like to help help us, uh, you can subscribe to our Patreon for as little as $2 a month. Uh, there are higher tiers, but I do need to put a disclaimer here uh, that a lot of the rewards associated with the higher tiers have been put on hold until uh, such time as we can run live shows again. Uh, and we intend to uh, make good on those rewards once our live shows are running again and we're going to add an extra live show for every show that we've had to cancel. So while you're not going to get your higher tier rewards straight away, you are still going to get all the rewards that you've paid for uh, essentially um, so yeah if you're able to do that that would be fantastic or even if it's just a couple of dollars a month yeah you know, if, if, if everyone who watched this video donated a couple of dollars a month we'd have twice as many dollars as there are views on this video um, we, we wouldn't actually there's the um, patreon take a little bit off the top of that and also the, the same person could watch it more than once that's not I, I've really not thought this through um, but yeah uh, essentially if you give us money then we'll have money that's, that's essentially how how things work. Um, if you don't want to subscribe to our Patreon, you can still support us by just do donating to our PayPal in the description below. Also, if you look in the description below, all the acts you've seen today have various um, have, 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 have various projects they're working on stuff you can uh, start, stuff you can support and even and, and, and their own PayPal's if you want to financially support them directly. Because um, level with you if they. The comedy industry is kind of fucked if people don't carry on supporting it uh, at this point in time. There's a load of great stuff going on. Uh, XS Malarkey are running uh, are, are running live stream shows every Tuesday. Uh, I highly recommend uh, you go checking them out. A uh, load of other comedy clubs are doing very similar things. Um, we're not doing that because we don't have the facilities to. Uh, I would otherwise love to. Um, but yeah, we can't do that. But yeah, do go and support that. Because essentially, if the comedy industry doesn't have the financial support uh, now... Uh, by the time we're out of this mess, it's gonna be it's gonna take a long time for it to recover. So if you are someone who is financially able to support, whether that's whether that's your favorite comedy club, your favorite comedian, or just like some kind of general initiative going on, please do. Um, if you're not, if you're someone who, who who can't afford that, that's fine. We do not expect you to to spend money that you don't have on us. Like the the, the whole ethos of Blizzard is that it's a crowdfunded pay what you want show for this very reason. I don't I don't want to charge people who who can't afford it. But if you can shout about us on social media and just sort of spread the word of any new of any initiatives and 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 um, hardship funds going on for the arts uh, that that you may discover, uh, we're going to be sharing a load on the social media on the Blizzard social media. If you could just spread the word about that, and then hopefully by the time this is all uh, this is all resolved, uh, we'll be able to carry on without uh, too much of of, of a hit. So uh, yeah, thank you very much uh, for watching and uh, stay vigilant, keep washing your hands, and you know have 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 a safe lockdown. Oh, and I almost forgot. Fuck the Tories. <laughs>